Hello, class of 2025. My name is Mrs. T. Lander. I'm one of the counselors at Woodstock North High School, and I am going to be talking to you today about preparing for high school. In today's presentation, we're going to cover what a high school schedule looks like, what credits are, courses for freshmen, special programs, summer school opportunities, and then how you will choose your classes. The basic schedule of our high school day is starting at 8.20 a.m. for first hour, and last hour ends at 3.15. We have seven classes a day. One, two, three, four, five, six is one class, seven, eight, and nine, and zero hour is optional. If you had a zero hour class, you do have to provide your own transportation, and that class starts at 7.20 in the morning. Four, five, six, as I mentioned before, is one class. Um, that is where your lunch is attached. We do run on a two semester calendar. So first semester is August through winter, uh, up until winter break. And second semester is when we come back from winter break to um, the end of the school year. So what is a credit? Most courses earn five credits per semester. So a year long course is two semesters and would earn five credits for first semester and five credits for second semester. To graduate, you will need 222 credits. To um, be promoted to being a sophomore, you have to earn at least 45 credits. Um, but most students do not have a problem with this as you will take a minimum of 30 credits each semester. And if you um, are very ambitious and took a zero hour and no study hall, you can earn up to 80 credits a year. So the first things that you need to know before we dive any further is you will be meeting with your counselor um, very soon um, to talk about your classes. Um, you will have to use PowerSchool um, to select your classes. So if you do not know your um, log into PowerSchool, you need to um, take care of that and talk to your middle school right away. Please include your parents um, in talking about your classes for next year. And then make sure when you do meet with your counselor that you have already done your course selection process, um, that you've already written down choices and that you are prepared with questions. So we want you to have done a lot of um, work before you meet with us. Um, we are happy to answer questions, but you know, come in prepared. So the course selection process starts with this video and please watch the video in its entirety. Um, you may even have to watch it a second time later. Review the list of courses available to freshmen. Um, this red link here, um, you can open up in a new window um, to look at every class available to freshmen from the core classes to electives to PE. Um, I will also show you a course selection worksheet. Um, this will help you kind of select your classes so you can work on that worksheet. Your worksheet will be um, mailed home to you as well as a list of recommended classes and a list of the courses available to freshmen. As I mentioned before, you're gonna log into PowerSchool to actually select your courses and you can follow the instructions here. I'm gonna review those at the very end of this presentation. And then finally, you're gonna meet with your counselor um, to review the selections you made, um, make adjustments and answer any questions that you have. This is a course selection worksheet. You can download it here by clicking the red link. Again, this helps you plan your courses and gives you a place to write down your alternates. On the left is a sample, a blank one that you can take a look at. And on the right, I filled out a sample for you so you can see how one might fill out the course selection worksheet and how you might fill a schedule. Again, remember, we're looking at you know, a minimum of 30 credits per semester. And notice at the bottom, there's a place for alternate electives. We really want you to make sure that you are um, taking note and highlighting classes that you would choose in case your first choices are not available. So what's required for freshmen? The majority of your classes are requirements. So we're gonna start in this area. Every freshman must take English. The choices are listed there, and we're gonna go into um, more detail in each of these choices. Math, um, every student will take a year of math. Um, you'll take geography, either one semester of geography or AP Human Geography, which is a full year. 
you'll take PE both semesters, and there's a lot of choices for these, and you'll take a full year of science, okay? Um, electives will fill up the rest of your seven period day, um, taking a minimum of one semester class and two year longs, or four more semester classes. So a total of 25 credits of electives minimum. Um, and you can select a study hall each semester. And study hall does not get you any credit, but it is time to get your homework done. Um, and for a lot of our students, it's really an essential part of their day. Okay. So I know there's a lot of choices listed on there. And as I mentioned before, I'm gonna comb through those um, one at a time so you can help kind of sort through what classes you need to take. So English, again, English is year long. Um, so your two options are regular English or honors English. Okay. Um, hopefully you understand that honors English is going to um, move faster, um, have more depth and usually more homework. Um, as you're thinking about what your choices. As I mentioned before, um, your recommendations will be mailed home. So if you were recommended for regular English or honors English, that will be listed on your recommendations. Uh, your counselor will also have those recommendations available to them when they meet with you. So if you don't know what those are, they can discuss those with you. Um, you are allowed to select a course that you were not recommended for. So if you really, really believe that you should be in honors English and you're doing very well and you're up for the challenge, but you weren't recommended for it, you still can select it. The recommendations are exactly that. They are recommendations. Math options. Now, math options are sequential, so you can't really jump um, a math level, but you can choose an honors versus a regular class um, if you are at that course. Um, most ninth graders will take Algebra 1. Okay. Some students will be recommended for a two-period block of algebra. That is for students who um, have lower math skills, and we really want you to have a really solid foundation in algebra before you move forward. Um, if you have completed algebra, then you will take geometry or honors geometry. Um, if you already were in geometry, um, and I, I'm not sure we have any this year, but then you would take algebra 2 or honors algebra 2. Okay, so Almost everybody here will be selecting Algebra 1 or Geometry um, or Honors Geometry. Science options, they are year long. Um, we have Geoscience, Biology, and Honors Biology. Um, to be placed into Geoscience, you would need to be recommended for that. Um, so again, the majority of our students will take Biology. Um, and if you are ready um, and recommended for it, then we have Honors Biology. Um, and just take a note here that uh, there is quite a bit of homework in the honors biology class. For social studies, um, this is the one area where some students may have one semester and others might have the two semester class. So geography is a one semester course, um, which means the other semester you would take an elective, okay? Um, or you would take AP Human Geography. Um, there is a video about AP Human Geography to help explain what you can expect in that class and to decide if that class is right for you. Again, PE. Us freshmen will take two semesters of PE. There's a lot of choices, okay? We always ask that you um, select two alternate options in case your first choices are full. Um, we do have some students who will ask about zero hour PE. Um, unfortunately, zero hour PE is in high demand. And so often freshmen um, can't get into zero hour PE. But if that's something that you really want to take, go ahead and select that. Just know that have a backup in case zero hour is full. Um, again, if you do zero hour, you must have your own transportation. That class starts at 7.20 in the morning and we do not provide a bus. Uh, there's a little note here about swimming because we do have a pool. Um, in many of our PE classes, you do have to swim. So just be prepared. There's not a lot to, you know, you can do to avoid that. Okay, I almost forgot about driver's ed. I don't know how I could have forgotten this because it's probably one of the most exciting things about getting um, to high school. Um, driver's ed is something that most sophomores take, but freshmen can request to take it in place of your second semester PE. 
Um, and notice that it says driver's ed and personal fitness. So a couple notes about driver's ed. You must be 15 years old by the first day of class. So if you will be 15 by the time um, January 5th or 6th um, of your freshman year, then you can um, select the driver's ed classroom. You must pass all of your classes to be eligible though. So if you don't pass your classes your freshman year, you will get removed from driver's ed. So you must pass at least six classes to be eligible for driver's ed your freshman year. Um, when you pick the class, when you select it in your course selection form in PowerSchool, you must select both driver's ed and personal fitness. So driver's ed is nine weeks and personal fitness is a second nine weeks. You do have to take them both together. You cannot opt to to just take driver's ed and then a different PE, okay? Um, and then in terms of getting your driver's license, so our driver's education classroom that you would be selecting is the classroom portion. So this is the book portion of getting your driver's license. The second part to getting your license is the behind the wheel actual driving. This part is not what you're signing up for when you sign up for driver's ed personal fitness, but most students will sign up for behind the wheel with the driver's ed teacher, um, when they start the classroom. So to get your license, it is two parts, the classroom driver's ed and then the behind the wheel. Um, the driver's ed personal fitness course you can select, again, is just that classroom portion. Um, you can choose to select the behind the wheel, but that'd be something you would do with the instructor, not with your counselor. For dual language something to consider. So if you're in the current dual language Spanish program, the Spanish classes that you can take in high school are a little bit different. For your freshman year, you can take dual language biology or dual language honors biology. You would also take a dual language Spanish class, either Vistas, Perspectivas, or maybe even AP Spanish. Okay, but that is based on your teacher recommendation. So at the high school level, there is a medallion, which is a medal that you can earn at graduation. In order to earn that um, in the dual language program, you would need to um, take 60 credits of courses in Spanish. That includes your science course, uh, your Spanish language course, um, 60 credits throughout your four years of high school and earn B minus or higher in all of them. And you would also need um, to pass a proficiency test in Spanish and English. If you're wanting to get the medallion, it is really hard to um, fit that in your schedule if you skip over dual language classes. So um, if you're really interested in that medallion, consider dual language biology or dual language honors biology with your Spanish class. Okay, this here in the top left corner is a sample of the list of courses for freshmen. Um, so you can blow this up or you can click on the link here in red. There is a key at the bottom of the list, and I just want to draw your attention to that to help you sort through what all these courses are. So first off, um, some of the courses have an H after it, and that means honors, okay? Um, this would be a higher grade point scale. So um, majority of our classes, our regular classes, are weighted on a 4.0 GPA scale, so an A is worth a 4.0. An honors course is worth a 5.0, where an A would be worth a 5. Okay. Um, other courses, if it doesn't have an honors, um, it may have a five in parentheses at the end. That also means it is weighted on that honor scale. Okay. So an honors course would end in an H um, or have the parentheses five after. Both mean the same thing. Um, some courses will say AP. That means advanced placement. Those are college classes um, where students take a college um, AP exam in the spring, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then DC means dual credit. So a student would be earning high school credit and credit at MCC simultaneously. Okay. Notice that semester um, long classes end with a five. So in this example, we have dual credits, computer literacy. Um, it ends with a five. So that means it's a semester long class and it is a dual credit. Um, there is no honors and there is no parentheses of five. So it would not be on honors. Um, scale. Year-long classes end with a 10. So here is honors biology. So that would mean the 10 would mean that it is a year-long class. So in choosing it, you'd choose it for both semesters. And this one is an honors, which means it would be weighted on the 5.0 scale. 
it's really important to know if a class is a year long or a semester long. So when you go to pick your classes, um, you're going to choose classes for each semester. And you want to make sure if it's a year long, you're choosing it for both semesters. And if it's a semester that you're only choosing it for one of them. So comparing AP honors and dual credit, this is just a little chart about the differences in each course to help you make your decision and understand um, what you're jumping into. Um, generally speaking, um, the workload is increased um, in most of these honors, AP and dual credit. Again, in dual credit, it depends on the course. Um, in terms of college credit, an honors course does not issue college credit. Um, an AP course will issue college credit if a student earns a three, four, or five on the AP exam in the spring. So for an AP class, the student gets the higher GPA, um, but they do not get college credit unless um, they do well on the AP exam in the spring and every student must take the AP exam. That is not optional. In dual credit, um, you will need a C or better um, to earn credit from MCC. So you will take our class with our teachers, like that dual credit computer literacy, and then whatever grade you get in the course, let's say you get a B, that will also go on your college transcript as a B. Okay, and then you can use that credit to transfer to other schools. So dual credit classes are open to anybody um, as long as you are, as long as you meet the qualifications for the specific class, and you can transfer those to any college that will accept it. Again, for the higher grade scale, all of our honors and AP classes are on the five point honor scale. And then for dual credit, it depends on the course. So in high school, there is a variety of electives that you can take. We do have it broken out into different subject areas on the courses available to freshmen. Just a few things to note um, in the art department, um, art and design is the first course before all of the other options like ceramics and drawing. Um, most all of the art classes are semester classes. In world language, most colleges will want to see two years in the same language. So many of our students will take a foreign language their freshman and sophomore year in high school. Um, music band, orchestra, choir, many of those classes are a year long. Just pay attention if they're a year or a semester. Some of those are by audition only. Um, family consumer science, that's where you can find courses about childcare, fashion, culinary arts, business, hopefully self-explanatory. And then in technology and engineering, we have courses, um, honors courses in engineering, um, as well as computers and graphics. So, um, your freshman year, this is just the tip of the iceberg of courses that you're available to take in high school. Your sophomore, junior, and senior year, there are many more classes that you can take. Um, and I hope that you take time to flip through the curriculum guide that is online so that you can get a feel for the classes that you might take later um, that you, know, you are interested in. On our YouTube channel, WNHS Thunder, you can find um, many videos describing the different electives that we offer. This includes electives for freshmen and electives for sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So if you're interested about the different courses we offer, I highly, highly recommend you go on the YouTube channel and watch those videos. Other things to think about when you are creating your schedule. You must take six classes each semester. That is the minimum. When you go to select your classes, it will not let you move on unless you pick an adequate number of courses. You can take a study hall during your day. For most freshmen, they opt for this because the transition to high school is a lot. Um, the homework is increased. Many students are in activities before school um, or after school. And so they really need that time to get their work done. So you can take one study hall um, each semester. Um, just a reminder, as you're planning, um, colleges will want to see three to four years of your core math, science, English, and social studies. Um, so those are not classes that we can push off. Um, as I mentioned before, those are all requirements for freshmen. But as you're 
thinking forward, um, you want to plan to continue to take those classes. Don't just look at the classes that fit in a seven period schedule. Be sure to kind of um, circle, write down, um, take note of the classes that would be your backups. Alternates are very important because there often becomes a time where the counselor needs to go back and look at a student's request because something did not fit. And we want you to look at classes that you would be interested in taking. Please ask for help. We are all here um, to help you navigate this process. I know this is a lot of information and for some students it's very new. This process is very new. Um, so please do not hesitate to ask your parents, have them contact the school, um, and our contact information is at the end. So something to consider when you're thinking about your classes, um, your freshman year, and then moving on through high school, we want to give you a quick snapshot of a couple opportunities um, available to you so that you can plan. Um, there are two new programs. Um, the dual degree program is newer to our district, and the 12 and 200 is an initiative that the district has started. Um, I'm also going to discuss um, summer school. So a dual credit um, graduate is someone who is in our dual degree program, and they earn both their high school diploma and their two-year associate's degree from MCC at the same exact time. So when you graduate from high school, you would be graduating with um, your first two years of college completed as well. Okay. Um, what is this program? Like, who is this for? This is really for anyone who is really committed to their academics. Um, if you're planning to transfer to a four-year university, this is for you. Um, and you have to be prepared to challenge yourselves and take courses over the summer, okay? The benefits of this program um, is that it has um, a great savings. Um, so the picture on the left explains a little bit about the, the cost of the program. Um, this says that the cost is $2,000. That isn't something that you pay for um, all up front, um, but throughout the programs, they're saying that a, a dual degree um, for our program um, can cost about $2,000 as compared to um, taking a two-year degree at MCC is around $7,000 and it looks at the other universities. So you can save a lot of money by going in this program. You get exposure to college level courses. And the nice thing about our dual credit um, courses, as I mentioned before, is that dual credit courses are available to anyone. Um, the dual credit program um, is more of a package program that puts together courses um, to get that degree as well. Um, there is a cohort. So this is a selective program. There's only about 15 students per high school that are selected into the program um, to work with each other um, towards those degrees. Um, and this, oops, helps with the transition to college. So this is kind of stepping foot into college more your junior and senior year to get you um, prepared academically um, and um, social emotionally uh, for the expectations of college. Again, this is a selective program and so you do have to apply to be accepted into the dual degree program. That application opens in October of your freshman year. So that's why we're kind of mentioning it now because um, it's just something that's going to creep up on you very fast. Um, the application will include um, essays, teacher recommendations, and a parent form. And then for additional information, you can go to our website or the McHenry County website um, about our dual degree. 12 and 200 is um, kind of a branch um, off of that. And the 12 and 200 initiative um, encourages our students to earn 12 college credits prior to graduating from high school. And again, this can be done through dual credit classes or, a, or earning credit through AP courses, as I mentioned um, earlier. Um, any student can take part in 12 and 200, and actually we hope that all of our students meet this goal. Um, so if you have questions, just ask your counselor about the different opportunities and where you are um, on track into meeting that um, honor. Again, dual credit and AP courses are available throughout all four years of high school, so you have a lot of options to meet this. 
um, and during um, eighth grade and really um, more into ninth grade, we are going to go over a four-year plan where you can plan out the courses to make sure that you're on track for this. This summer, they will be offering accelerated summer school. Now, I know some students are probably thinking, oh my gosh, I just got back from winter break and you're talking about taking my summer. Any student who is really motivated and would like to, we are offering some summer school options to get a jump start on high school. Um, the dates and costs are listed here. I'm just going to briefly mention the courses. So geography, you can take um, your um, one semester geography class um, and get that out of the way. Um, algebra one, you would have to take the full year of the course. Okay. Um, if you um, took the algebra one, then you would be eligible eligible, excuse me, to take geometry your freshman year. Okay. Um, and then we are hoping to offer the dual credit computer literacy course as well. So just one way to maybe get some credits, um, get exposure to high school classes and start earning some college credit. Okay. So now that we've gone over all of the different programs and different courses, how do you pick your classes? So this year, as I mentioned before, um, is very different and you are the first class that is diving into PowerSchool. So what you're going to do is you're going to log into your PowerSchool page and on the left-hand side, you're gonna click on this class registration button, okay? Um, and there's a printout of these instructions at the very beginning of the presentation. But hopefully you can follow this um, and remember just go to your power school log into class registration when you get there you're going to proceed through each subject category so at the top there's information basically uh, reminders about what's required um, and how many credits to choose okay but read all the information under each little box so every um, course that's required um, is marked by a red exclamation mark. So you're going to start by clicking on the box with the pencil um, and your choices will show up. Um, and you cannot proceed or submit this if you don't go through the courses that are required. Again, just read the little information underneath um, the title of the course. So English semester one, it says English is required. Choose one course. Okay. Um, so you just want to go through every single box and make sure you're answering the question. So when you pull up math for first semester, this is what you will see. Um, you're going to select one course and it'll tell you how many you have to take. Okay. Um, and the credits are listed as well. So just kind of note that this is just the first semester of a class. Um, math one here says case manager approval required. What that means is this course is for students who have an IEP. Um, so you would not be able to select this if you did not have an IEP. And really, if you have an IEP, this is still determined um, with your case manager's approval. Um, so that's why you see that on there. So if that, um, hopefully that doesn't confuse anybody. Okay. Um, so you're going to check the box for the course you choose. And you're going to hit OK. Hopefully very simple. Um, each subject category will list all the courses available to your specific grade. Um, be sure to pick a class both first semester and second semester. If you don't and it's a requirement, it will not let you move on. So um, if I was going to check the box for Algebra 1, um, then I would have to hit OK and then go into Math Semester 2 and click Algebra 1 and hit Submit. At the bottom of the list of the subject categories is a tally of the number of credits. Be sure to choose between 60 and 80 credits. You cannot submit it if you do not have enough credits. Um, and then you're going to hit submit. Your counselor will review this with you. So if you um, feel a little overwhelmed, you're not sure um, how you did on picking your classes, or if you missed something, we will review it with you. So please do not panic. But we do want you to go through this process prior to meeting with us. So who is your counselor? Again, I'm Mrs. T. Leander, so I will work with the students with the last names A through F. My contact information is there. Mrs. Rohrbach will work with students with G through O, and Mr. Cole with the last names P through Z. Please reach out to us. You can call us or email us with any questions you have. We'll be happy to answer any questions, walk you through this process. If you would like to set up an appointment, maybe a Google Meet or a phone conference, you can click or you can book me appointment. Um, mine is jessicatlander.youcanbook.me, and then Mrs. Robax and Mr. Coles is listed as well. Again, thank you for your time. I know this 
um, was very in-depth, but if you need to watch it again, please go through and watch it. Um, check out those elective videos, um, ask questions, and remember in the mail will be your course selection sheet, um, a list of recommendations, and a list of courses available to you. Good luck, and I can't wait to meet you.